What's up everybody? Welcome back. So we're going to continue with some more spice picks in the Great League and in today's video I'm going to be trying out Pillow Swine in the Great League. Now the reason I invested in a Pillow Swine is because I found a 100% IV Swine up during the Holiday Cup which is why I decided to evolve it into a Pillow Swine and double move it because I'll eventually probably max it out into Mammal Swine for the Master League and I wanted to try, out, try it out as Pillow Swine in the Great League along the way and honestly it's actually not bad. I mean it's Got the exact same moveset as Mammal Swine, and also it's much more tankier than Mammal Swine is. I mean, Mammal Swine is pretty glassy in the Master League as well, but Pillow Swine is actually pretty decent, right? With access to Avalanche and Bulldoze, it's going to be able to hit for neutral against almost everything in the meta. I can't think of any Pokemon that can resist both Ice and Ground type moves. Yes, it's going to have quite a few weaknesses, but if you can save shields for it, it can be pretty solid in being able to close out games, right? And also in this particular team comp, we'll be running it alongside Skarmory and Shadow Swampert. Now, this team is very similar to that of the double Mud Boy line. Uh, where I'm, I'm going to be using Pillow Swine instead of Viscash. It's not exactly the same thing because obviously Pillow Swine has a lot more weaknesses than Viscash does. But the strategy is pretty similar, right? You lead with Skarmony, you stay in for a bit, and then you switch it to Swamper to basically bait out their Grass type or something else that could probably be weak to Skarmory. Uh, so that, you know, Pillow Swine can basically sweep end game, right? Uh, and honestly, this team is actually not bad. I mean, it ended up working out much better than I thought it would be. And uh, like I said, we pull off some really nice wins as well. So let's just get straight into these battles. Okay, moving on to the first battle here. I'm going to be leading with Skarmory with Shadow Swampert and Pillow Swine in the back. So we have Skarmory into a Ferrothorn. Very positive lead. You definitely want to catch these grass types in the lead, especially Ferrothorn, because this thing would be a real problem for our backline, right? Because both Pillow Swine and Swampert would have a hard time going up against it. They go for Mirror Shot, which is really interesting. This tells me they're probably not running Thunder. They make a switch into their Mandibus. This is fine. I'm going to immediately go into my Pillow Swine here. Pillow Swine is a pretty positive matchup against Mandibus because we're doing super effective damage with these Powder Snows and also Avalanche as well. And again, I don't shield the foul play because Mandibus is a very tanky Pokemon and doesn't have a very high attack stat. So I'm going to go for the Avalanche here. It does massive, super effective damage there and almost one-shots it, but it's fine. They're going to go for a Charge Move right now. So I'm going to actually shield this because I know I can just Powder Snow farm this uh, Mandibus down, right? And if you're going to have a lot of loaded energy for whatever's going to come out next, they actually come in with a Zoom rule. So this is not a great matchup, obviously, because we're taking super effective damage from those bubbles because of the ground typing, but I'm going to go for the Bulldoze. This is going to do quite a bit of neutral damage to this Azumarill. Does about 30% of Azumarill's health, which is pretty significant. And at this point, I know I can't get to another Bulldoze, so I'm going to go for an Avalanche here, hoping, let's see if we can get a shield, and we get a shield. This is brilliant, right? This is fantastic. They do farm us down. They have quite a bit of energy right now, so I'm going to come in with my Swampert here because I want to preserve the Skarmory for the Ferrothorn, and I'm going to soak up this charge move. It is a player off, does quite a bit of neutral damage there. And I was expecting them to switch out and I'm going to go for the Hydro Cannon here, but they make a really nice switch into their Ferrothorn to catch the Hydro Cannon, right? Now, this is fine. It's actually, this is going to put the Ferrothorn into Sky Attack range. So I'm going to switch into my Skarmory here. Unfortunately, they're able to get to a charge move. So I'm going to let it go through. It was too soon to be Thunder. It's just a Mirror Shot. They're probably running Mirror Shot and Power Whip. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight for the Sky Attack here and almost takes out the Ferrothorn, but I can just farm it down, right? This is probably just going to be another Mirror Shot because they've probably done just about like three or four Bullet Seeds right now. And it's just a mirror shot which is resisted and I'm going to be able to air slash down here. And this is GG's at this point. I'm just going to go straight for the sky attack right now. And uh, let's see if this gets the final shield from the Azumarill. But they actually let that go through. So they, I, I don't know, they're probably worried about a charge move coming from my Swampert. It's fine. I'm going to shield this up. They actually go for the player off shield bait. I mean, they're probably running player off in Hydro Pump. But it doesn't matter because at this point I can just air slash down, right? So they, they realize that and decide to give up the match there. And it was pretty close. I mean, like I said, Ferrothorn can be a very difficult Pokemon to deal with. But the good thing is we caught it on the lead. And the fact that they're not running Thunder makes it even better for Skarmory, right? Any Ferrothorn that, that doesn't run Thunder is a fantastic matchup for Skarmory because you're going to be able to completely wall, wall it. So anyways, moving into the second battle here, we have Skarmory into an Alolan Ninetales again. So this is actually a pretty positive matchup once again here because... Uh, I don't want Swampert or Pillow Swine to go up against it because we'll take so much damage from those charms. But I'm going to go straight for the Sky Attack here. I think I'm probably going to have to eventually switch out because in case they have a Grass type in the back, then I definitely have to preserve my Skarmory for it. So I'm going to try an Air Slash down here, but Alola Ninetales, right? It's going to be able to spam those Weather Balls. Even, even if it's running Charm as its Fast Move, they're going to be able to get to Weather Balls pretty quickly. The reason I shielded that, I was hoping that I can farm it down, but they're able to get to another Weather Ball here. This is really unfortunate. I can't shield this, unfortunately. So I'm going to soak up the Weather Ball, build up to a Brave Bird, and then switch it to my Swampert and Mud Shot down here. So let's see what they come in with. They come in with Jellicent. Now, this is not a great matchup, obviously, because Jellicent kind of walls Swampert, especially if you're not running Earthquake, because both Hydro Cannon and Sludge Wave are resisted because of the water. Water goes typing 
And I'm just gonna go straight for Hydro Cannon because that's probably more energy efficient. And I'm hoping they go for the Bubble Beam Shield Bait, but they go straight for Shadow Ball, right? So that's unfortunate. So I'm gonna go for the, another Hydro Cannon here. Now, even if it's resisted, it's gonna still do quite a bit of damage to this Jellison, but they do shield that, which is fine. And they're probably gonna be able to farm us down here, which is not great. So I'm gonna come in with my Skarmory and then throw the Sky Attack as soon as possible, right? We have so much loaded energy on Skarmory right now. I'm gonna go straight for the Sky Attack. Probably should have gone for Brave Bird, but I didn't know that we had en enough energy for a Brave Bird. I'm gonna go for the Sky Attack here. And now I'm gonna switch into my Pillow Swine. And hopefully I can get to a Bulldoze before they can get to a Charge Move, right? But unfortunately, they're able to get to a Charge Move. So I'm gonna shield this up. And hopefully I can get to a Bulldoze before they can get to another one. So they have so much loaded energy right now. And unfortunately, they're able to get to another Charge Move. I'm really hoping this is not Shadow Ball, but it is a Shadow Ball. It does massive neutral damage. To my pillow swine there. I'm gonna go for the bulldoze here. This is probably gonna take out the jellison, but it's GG's at this point because they still have a full health Pokemon in the back. And also it's an Azumarill, so there's not a lot you can do there. So I mean there are situations like that where you will get hard countered. I mean, they probably had like the perfect hard counters in the back. I mean, we did have a pretty favorable lead, but then they had Jellison, which could probably handle my Swampert, and then of course they had Azumarill for uh the pillow swine, right? So it was a very difficult sort of matchup to overcome, but it's fine. We do make a comeback here. Uh so we have Skarmory into a Skarmory. So typically what, how I like to play the mirror is I'm, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna wait for them to throw a charge move. Right? So I'm gonna build up to a sky attack here and then soak up the sky attack and then switch into my Swampert. So I'm gonna soak this up and then immediately go into my Swampert here and then I'm gonna try and uh, get off this Hydro Cannon as soon as possible. I'm expecting them to switch out but they're still staying in which is fine. I'm gonna go straight for the Hydro Cannon. It's gonna do massive neutral damage to the Skarmory as it does there. It does about 50% of its health. So I'm gonna try and get off another one. They're able to get to a charge. I'm definitely shielding this up. And at this point, I'm going to actually build up to two Hydro Cannons and then go back to back here. So I'm just going to build up two of these and go back to back because if they choose to shield this one, then I'm going to be able to get off another one here. So I'm going to go for the Hydro Cannon. It does get the shield, which is actually fantastic because we have another one ready to go, right? I'm going to go for the next one here. And let's see if this gets the second shield. It does get the second shield. So this is perfect for us. So I'm going to actually let my Swampert go down because I can come in with my Pillow Swine and completely farm this Skarmory down, right? So I'm gonna let it go down here. I'm gonna wait out the Switch Clock a little bit and then come in with my Pillow Swine and then completely farm it down. But they make a switch into this Shadow Machamp. They have no more shields. We have loaded energy on Skarmory. I'm gonna go straight for the Sky Attack here. Now this is gonna one-shot the Shadow Machamp, right? In spite of the nerf to Sky Attack, Shadow Machamp is an absolute glass cannon. So they have an Azumarill in the back and this is almost GG's at this point. I'm gonna go just go straight for Sky Attacks in this matchup. It's gonna probably take like three Sky Attacks to get rid of it, but yeah. We have a shield as well, so I'm actually going to shield this up. So I don't, I'm probably going to be an, just an ice beam, but I'm still going to shield this because uh, I don't want my pillow swine to go up against this Azumarill. So we're going to try and go for another sky. Actually, I'm going to go for the Brave Bird right now. Uh, the reason I go straight for the Brave Bird is I know the switch timer is not back up. It's very of them trying to sack swap, but it's fine. They're not going to be able to do it. But now they come in with their Skarmory and then I'm going to try and go for the Avalanche here. And this is, they decide to give up the match there. So yeah, I mean, a pretty close battle. I honestly, I mean, at the end of it, we pretty much had that, but uh, I think sort of uh, Shadow Swampert, again, if you don't have an answer to Shadow Swampert, it can be an absolutely fantastic safe switch option, right? Especially against team comps that don't have grass types in the back, Swampert with energy can do really, really well. So anyways, moving into the, the fourth battle here, we are two and one in this set right now. So we have Skarmory into an Azumarill. So typically how I like to play this matchup is I like to count the bubbles. So I'm going to count the bubbles here. They've done about seven bubbles right now, so I know it's a Hydro Pump. If it's a Hydro Pump, I'm definitely going to shield this because that would do quite a bit of neutral damage. And then I'm going to try and go for the Brave Bird here, but they make a switch into their Alolan Marowak to catch it. This is fine. Alolan Marowak is going to take so much damage from this Brave Bird. I'm going to switch into my Swampert and try and go for the Hydro Cannon as soon as possible here. Now it's going to obviously take out uh, the Alolan Marowak if it goes unshielded. And it does get the shield there, which is fine. And they're probably going to throw a Charge Move right now. It's fine. I'm going to let it go through. It's probably going to be a Shadow Bone that's going to do quite a bit of neutral damage there. It does about 50% of Swampert itself, which is fine. I'm going to be able to Mud Shot down here. And then we have so much loaded energy right now. They come back with the Zubinal, but we're only a couple of Mud Shots away from a Sludge Wave, right? So I'm going to go straight for the Sludge Wave. It's going to do massive, super effective damage and almost one shot the Azumarill. A couple of Mud Shots to take it out. And we're so far ahead in the game right now. They have an Alolan Nine Tails in the back, and this is perfect. We still have almost full health Skarmory. But I'm actually going to come in with my Pillow Swine and then try and get their final shield and soak up some of their energy so that I can come in with my Skarmory and land a Brave Bird, right? So I'm going to let it go through both Weather Ball and Psy Shock are neutral. Obviously, Weather Ball is neutral because of the ground ice typing. And I'm going straight for the Bulldoze here. Obviously, don't want to go for Avalanche because that's resisted. And let's see if this gets the shield from the Alola Nine Tails. It does get the shield and this is GG at this point. I'm just going to wait it. I'm going to stay in here and just wait for them to throw their energy, which is fine. I'm going to let it go through. It's probably going to be a Weather Ball. Uh, it is a weather ball, which is fine. And then Alola 19 is going to be able to get to charge moves pretty quickly, right? So it's not, I can't take anything for granted here. I'm going to shield this up. 
and uh, hopefully i can get to a brave bird before they can get to another charge move so trying to get to another brave bird but i'm able they are able to get to another weather ball here and this is again alone in nine tails going to be able to spam those charges especially with powder snow it's going to be able to spam those weather balls right but luckily i'm able to get to a brave bird here probably could have sky attack would have done it but i just wanted to play it safe and then brave bird was almost for sure going to take it out right so does take it out there and pretty comfortable victory once again i mean again swamper just putting in so much work i mean i, I just can't it's in my opinion it's probably arguably the best pokemon in the great league i mean it's probably not ranked number 1 on pv pog but it's without question the greatest pokemon across all leagues anyways so we have scarmory into a sable eye right here uh again pretty neutral matchup they make a switch into their hypno I'm not sure what to do at this point so i was trying to switch into my swamper to catch a thunder punch unfortunately we're not able to get it in time so i'm going to soak it up and the switch actually happens after um, this is that weird glitch right it's happened quite a bit for me as well where the switch happens after the charge move comes through which is really unfortunate because i would have liked to stay in and throw a sky attack or a brave bird or something but i'm going to go for the hydro cannon hydro cannon does get the shield there but i'm hoping this is another just another thunder punch because it's too soon to be shadow ball it is a thunder punch which is fine and i'm going to go for another hydro cannon here this is now this is going to put the hypno pretty low right if it goes on shield it's going to do massive neutral damage here puts it pretty low there and they're going to throw a charge this is fine they probably could have farmed us down but it's a good thing they didn't so they're going to throw a charge move this is fine it's an ice punch uh, but i'm not sure why they didn't they didn't throw the ice punch if they had it on my swampert But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go for the sky attack here. They actually make a switch into their op, uh, again into their sable eye, which is fine because I'm gonna be able to get to two sky attacks, right? Now it's gonna do quite a bit of neutral damage, and then I'm expecting them to throw a charge move right about now, which is fine. I'm gonna let it go through. I'm gonna basically save two shields for pillow swine and look to close out this game. Now pillow swine with two shields can be really solid in being able to close out games, right? So I'm gonna try and completely powder snow this uh, sable eye down. I'm gonna shield this up definitely because foul play would do quite a bit of damage. and then i should be able to farm down before they can get to another charge move i am able to so let's see what they have in the back i do have to still watch out for them trying to sack swap but they actually come in with beedle but i know their switch timer is not back up here right so i'm going to go straight for the avalanche here we have two back to back at this point it's going to do massive neutral damage and does about 70 80% of beedle's health and we're able to get to another one right here this is going to take out the beedle and then yeah i mean their hypno in the back really ha doesn't have too much health and we should be able to powder snow down there we still have a shield anyways So even if they had gotten to a charge move, we should have, we could have, we could have shielded that and gone, gone to an avalanche there. So as you can see, Pillow Swine really putting in work in that team comp. Yes, Swampert did a lot of work as well, but Pillow Swine definitely held its own. It's definitely not a pushover by any stretch of imagination. But anyways, those are some fun battles to sort of uh, try out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be trying out a lot of spice picks as well. Stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll see you next time.